So the project we're working on here is called Common Sense, and the idea is to explore the general idea of um, sensing environmental air quality using mobile internet devices. Okay. So uh, we're constructing a series of prototypes. You know, there are different pieces of this project, right. some of which are hardware. And so this is a device that um, has been built in cooperation with UC Berkeley. Um, and basically, this has most of the pieces of a working cell phone, right. um, but in addition, it also has air chemical air quality sensors. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a carbon monoxide sensor, this is an ozone sensor. Um, these are other sensors for um, uh, nitrogen oxides. And the idea is that you know people could carry devices like this right. around in their everyday lives, and they could get um, information about uh, the air quality immediately around them, yep. um, not only for their personal health reasons, but the thing that we're actually perhaps more interested in is um, the idea of having large groups of people or communities of people right. collect data so that they can understand what the air quality is like in their area. Right. So we're so, very interested not only in the sort of questions of building the mobile devices, right. of characterizing the science, and we do have people who are working in um, machine learning to be able to do those kinds of statistical analyses. Right. Um, we're also working with people um, on the Berkeley campus in atmosphere or chemistry who are, who are working on this project. Excellent. But um, in particular, um, Allison Woodruff over there has been doing field work um, with people who are government employees who work in the area of air quality, um, people who work for NGOs, people who are concerned citizens, people who suffer from uh, uh, breathing disorders, and are therefore very interested in all of these issues. Right. And trying to understand what their needs are and what their desires are in terms of, of knowing more about their environment. Gotcha. And so um, we're designing community-based software so that people can collect the data, view it, share it, understand, and, and sort of collectively understand it. Right. Um, you know, with the with the understanding that different people are coming from different directions. Sure, sure, sure. The government, sure. The government often have a different perspective. Right. right. Help that. But, but the idea being anybody could have one of these devices. Exactly. Uh, it, it's and obviously a SIM card there, so obviously it talks to some sort of right. cell network. That's exactly right. Um, and then there's some sort of reporting mechanism that allows it to tie into. That's right. So, um, like I said, you know, the eventual goal is that, you know, 90% of what's in here is right. what's in a phone. Right. Or in a mid. Okay. Right? And so here, you know, basically, um, the, the collaboration with UC Berkeley is, um, this is a, a project in collaboration with Perval Dutta and David Culler on campus. Um, this is a small moat, if you know about the Berkeley moats. Yep, right. Small data uh -huh. device. Um, and then the control logic for the sensors itself. Okay. And um, so you're exactly right. I mean, all the other stuff is basically a, um, a processing and uplink mechanism into our database, which, you can, which this is just a flash rendering of. It. Sure, sure, sure. Um, how many of these devices are out in the wild right now? Right, this very instant, <laughs> yeah. um, there are three that are wandering around, one in San Francisco and two in Berkeley. I see. And so okay. this data on this display yeah. actually is live. Right. On that display, um, we have some historical examples where people have taken drives, where people have walked right. around other parts of Berkeley near the highway right. to try to understand. You know, can, can we see how that data is represented? Is that, is that on the map here? Sure. <laughs> well, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by represent. Well, what, what, kind of, what can we derive from, from the sensors? And how, how, how is it displayed in this in this flash map? Um, well, let's see. So if we look at the historical data, Sorry. so Neil, our, one of our hey, undergraduate Neil. interns, um, <laughs> um, has been working on on a flash interface where you have the ability not only to um, see the data, mm -hmm. you know, you can watch it you can watch it pull up as if it were live. So this is a playback mechanism. I see. Um, so you can see this represents the device moving along. Exactly, and okay. you can see the the you know the uh, the reading is changing over time. Yeah. Um, you know, he's providing some basic tools to be able to, you know, move the window of what you see um, and see subsets of it. Right. Um, okay. Very cool. And so this is a very, you know, this is a uh, well-designed but straightforward way to visualize this data. So what does the red dot mean in, in that? Uh, in this case, it's a, it's one that's a high reading, uh, carbon monoxide. Okay. Um, so is this specifically mapping carbon monoxide, or is it, is it both? This particular one is yeah. carbon monoxide. Yeah. 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 Right. The square sort of selects whatever 
we won. So he's dragged the square here, and now you can see that some more detail, right? Oh, very cool, very cool. And um, what, what's the sampling rate? Like, what, 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 what time period is that? Um, I think it's about like a minute or so. Yeah. We're, we're pulling, we're pulling the samples every ten seconds, and I think you're plotting every minute or something. I see. Is there an aggregate of, of the of, of the ten, of the samples over the minute? Is the multiple samples over the one minute? Too? It actually gets well. It's a long story, but it, it gets aggregated. Yeah. That's yeah. Kind of why not? Um, yeah. <laughs> Cool. Very cool. Um, so this is a this is a you know fairly straightforward visualization of what's yeah. going on that someone could use to understand their day. Right. Say, right. And what we're doing is we're actually working with the confrontational computing project. Right. And their project, if you haven't talked to them already, is um, about tools for people to take um, underlying facts and structure them in a way that supports or doesn't support an argument. So you know, I like or don't like, you know, Barack Obama or whatever, right? And so we're working with them to put in features. Like so I was referring to community before, right? And different stakeholders and different viewpoints. We're working. We'll be working with them to put in versions of those features that are specifically oriented towards exploring this kind of geosexivity. Right. So if people notice highways are high, which is kind of an obvious point to make, you know, people can isolate examples and talk about that. If they think it's due to the steel factory that's over here, right. then similar points can be made. Right. Okay. And so the idea yeah. there is that, you know, rather than having each individual understand their own data, right. you can scale it up. Right. And you can have people go, oh, you know, all this data around this area should be this. Um, and so that, that's the next step for this software is to be building and features for communities to be able to discuss and annotate. So not only are you crowdsourcing the data with multiple devices out there and plotting them on maps that pretty much anybody can see, but then you're sort of also you're involving the community and actually uh, applying meaning to that or to sort of exactly. discuss there's, what's there's going on there. Exactly. There's important context yeah. that a sensor can't capture, right. that people can capture. Now, that, that said, of course, um, you know, you don't want to crowdsource all of the analysis because really what you want to do is hit that with a lot of statistics, right? And so um, Ali Rahimi, who isn't here, but that's his poster, so you catch him later. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, is our machine learning guy. Okay. And so he's, uh, he's, you know, so you can see some maps of San Francisco that he's got generated from our previous data set to capture. Yeah. Um, and so he's looking using Gaussian processes um, in order to um, do these kinds of analyses, but right. to interpolate basically in both space and time. Right. Um, because one tricky thing about this data is, unlike the EPA, where their sensor, they only have one sensor, but it never moves. And it's always on. Right. And our sensors are not always on, and they move. Right. Um, and so you need a significantly more processing in order to turn that into, you know, a picture of the entire Yeah, sensor. sure, sure. Right. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for... Uh, you should be yeah. sure, um, you know, because that, that's like the overall story of the project. You should definitely be sure to talk to the, the guys over there who are talking about um, taking a particulate matter sensor and shrinking it down to M scale. Right now, a particular a box to measure particulate matter, which is like you know small, right? I mean, it's basically yeah. you know, uh, dust, pollen, the stuff coming out of a diesel engine. Yeah. Um, and you can buy a box that's about this big, um, and they're wanting they're wanting to shrink it down to something we can fit into. Yeah, this, it out. yeah right. into, into a cell phone. Right, right. So right now, this does carbon monoxide and uh, NOx and ozone. There's an ozone. And, and it, it measures a lot of other things like right. temperature and humidity. So you have to you have to measure those things. Better. Sure. So, and then particular matter in that box, and then I imagine there might be other things that over time that could be... Exactly. I mean, there, there are plenty of things that people might want to measure in their environment. Right. We're trying to understand, you know, what's compelling for people, what are the things that people are interested in, what are they interested in exploring, what things will build, people build communities around, um, and right. those are the actual research. So, so one final question I have for you, um, especially uh, uh, since you were talking about the community aspect of it. How, um, is this going to be open in some way where people can pull this data out and sort of, you know, mash it up in some way? Or, or Absolutely, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can sort of, so, um, um, like I said, our next step is to be doing a study with um, uh, an NGO, basically, in, in, West, in West Oakland. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea at that point is, as we do these engagements, um, then to be to put the data out on the web and have it be available to do mash -ups. This obviously is a mashup. Right. I mean, um, but internally done, but yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, thanks so much. And your uh, for your name, Paul. 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 Okay. Okay.